recording in progress. What's up? Let's go. How y'all doing? Yo, yo. Let's get the light. We're here. The light. <laughs> We're still here. How's everybody doing out there? We haven't got canceled yet. Bro. Yet. <laughs> just, I'm just counting my seconds. I'm, I'm from a different dimension. I mean, I'm always been from a different dimension, but I'm definitely more from like the Rat Pack like era of you know when men were men sort of thing. I'm still trying to convince my wife of that, but society has long since left me, man. Long since left me. Shit. I went, uh, I went last night to the mall. So I didn't. If you want to laugh, I didn't know it was Christmas time. Like I did, but not till I got to the mall. I went to Dick's to get some fishing gear and some workout <laughs> clothes. So I had to walk through the mall, right? Oh my God. It was crazy. Like it's like Sunday night, like five o'clock, mall closes an hour. And I'm like, oh yeah, it's the freaking Christmas time. People are there shopping, going crazy. And I'm like, these people are wild. Like bags and bags. And I'm like, I know they have no money. <laughs> dude it's getting it's getting i think it's getting serious like you, you see every day more and more layoffs being announced i'm getting you know everybody here is probably on linkedin out there we have lots of colleagues i have lots of people i've known for years and yeah. years in finance great traders great portfolio managers great editors research people that are like oh can you help me out how can you help me out so say an extra prayer this this winter for your you know your, your fellow man try to be a little bit less harsh i think it's it's a bit of a tough environment out there bro honestly no joke it really is i was i was talking to my sister last night and apparently even like her kids in school they don't even have the week of christmas off <laughs> is that wild like they're like nah screw your traveling there's no uh you could travel they have the week off for january so the first yeah. of the year wow no, right no. like remember christmas break you know we got, we got it i got in-laws coming i got <laughs> I don't have any of that <laughs> oh i do i sneak out though i sneak out when they get here and i go do a little bit of like a pre-christmas poker tournament at the hard rock sort of you know not chris like a couple days before christmas eve i'll go out and have a uh i'll have a uh, iron chic night and I'll, I'll i'll blow it out at the hard rock and play some some high limit hold them with some game because all these people come into town you know like not everybody's into like christmas some people are just partying over the break do you, now do you bring anyone or do you just go by yourself Oh, I go solo, man. I'm not there to make friends. I'm not there to make friends at all. It's like, hey, first thing. Hey, how are you? Let's have morning coffee. No, I'll be at the Hard Rock at 7. Well, I told my wife, you know, I'm like, if you want it to keep keep it copacetic, because we a little bit have different pol political views, the in-laws and myself, if you want to keep it cool. Oh, like, yeah, holidays, yeah. I have to be a little bit, I have to be a little bit scarce. I can't, it can't be full-time. It has to be part-time. It's better for everybody. So that That's smart. So me and Jeff were talking even before and we're like, man, there ain't much going on in the markets. Like it no. feels like, so I, I was actually, you know, and I'm still in very bullish going into quarter one of uh, 2023, mm -hmm. but it feels like even the markets are like on Christmas break. Like there's just no volume. We had Friday's dump of about 30 points in the S and P, you know, like right before the close, it's just, you know, we're trickling higher today. I well, mean, well think nice. about it, dude. Like everybody was expecting. So we had that pretty decent rally off, off of, uh, off Jay Powell being a little bit dovish at his speech at uh, Brookings Institute a little over a week ago. And then like the NASDAQ just gave it all right back. So I think like bigger money players are kind of just like, you know, screw 2022. I'm just going to, I'm just, I, I'm, done, I'm done with this shit. I'm done trying to, I'm done trying to get the momentum going. I'm going to wait a little bit. I'm going to go into 2023 with some more cash. I'm going to nibble. So you don't have like, you know, there's people like us, there's traders, there's hedge fund people. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the big money players, the vanguards of the world. Those kind of portfolio managers are like, forget it, dude. I'm going to come into 23 with some cash and then we'll see what happens. But it's not fun for us junkies. No, there's not much to do. No, you got to bet on the World Cup, bro. That's where the action is. Did you see? Well, they're, <laughs> but they're killing people. That's <laughs> Dude, that was some wild stuff, wasn't it? 
the, the another guy got killed yesterday. Well, I don't know if he got killed. He, you know, his wife. This is fun. This is where I get a little bit, a little bit tinfoiled hat. His wife, the, the journalist, I think, is who you're talking about, Grant Wall, the yeah, soccer yeah, journalist yeah. that died. His wife is a uh, is an infection specialist that worked under Fauci and works oh, in the White House. Man. Yeah, she's one of these people. And so he's probably been vaxxed like 18 times, 19 times at this point. It's still good. I don't know. Though. I don't know. I don't know. The guy was in the clinic for having respiratory issues and this and that. You would think with all the vaccines the guys had got. Well, his uh, heart's but, probably exploding. I don't know, dude. Lots of young people are just going, it's, 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 it's a treacherous time. And then you see China. And then you see China, who this was my favorite. A month ago, these dudes were welding people into their apartments, right? Yeah. They're welding people into their apartments because like COVID is the worst thing ever and they have a zero COVID policy. The head of the like health services department for the Chinese Communist Party comes out last night and goes, oh, it's the same thing as the flu, Omnicron. <laughs> Talk about a 180. The same thing as the flu. Yeah, we know. Duh, yeah. But like come on man they're not even playing they're not even pretending anymore like this hasn't been like a bit of a scam on some level i'm not saying people didn't die i'm not saying it's not terrible for your 90 year old like great grandma it, it that's terrible for people that are compromised but now that there's like this like full thing this full about face now because of all this pressure kind of did, funny did you see Musk prosecute fosky fucky he's like he's, yeah, yeah he's his, like his he's got his pronouns, pronouns and <laughs> I love. I mean, he's be he's becoming a bigger hero to me every day. He was on know. Rogan drinking. Um, I think Friday they were drinking some whiskey, and Musk was uh, you know, he's he's out there telling the truth now, which you know he he doesn't even care anymore. He's the I most dangerous man in the world. I don't know how he he must have a security detail like no other. I feel like oh, he's oh. gonna get like I feel like this guy's got to watch out for that Clinton mafia hit job that's coming his way. Because he's the most dangerous guy in the world right now. The stuff well, that I, 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 I was telling, uh, I was telling a friend, I was like, "Yeah, I might get my mom um, the Tesla SUV for Christmas or a birthday. It depends on when I could get one in." Yeah. And I was like, "I don't know if it's even cool to own a Tesla anymore because Musk, you know, like I don't even know if you know the the because uh, you know all the left people don't like him anymore. So I was like, I don't even know if it's cool anymore." It's a good car. I think Vince part of the Foster. reason, part of the reason, do you hear me now? Do you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Part of the re I mean, look, the, he, they make great electric. The reason they have all the market share, what well, makes the best electric vehicle? Oh, 100%. All the other ones are just like lucid, about to, you know, trying to raise more money. The Tesla killer. You had Fisker with a short report the other day. Uh, Rivian? Rivian canceled their thing with Benz. They're and so much uh, debt. I, I had all lucid the EV puts. makers. Are, are I had BS. lucid as a uh, as a short. I had lucid as a short. Pull up uh, lucid and link trades. What is it now eight bucks? Nine yeah, bucks? Then, then they might be a zero in 2023. We should look at that in a minute. But you know, we just want to let people know this is probably going to be our last uh, crush the open in 2022. Monday, yep. Christmas, Monday, the market's closed. Next week, we have like a big company-wide meeting sort of thing going on. And we are trying to figure out ways to make this much better. We've got massive plans in 2023 for y'all. I think that you guys like what we do, Lance and I in particular, together. And we're going to go much harder, much harder in that direction next year. And much more active trading. We'll get off Zoom. None of this, you know, format that looks like a boring work call. I mean, I'll be honest. I hate going on Zoom. I feel like I'm on a work call from two years ago or something like, you know. Well, you know, when they try to get us to go on these hours, I'm like, you got to be freaking kidding me. I don't drink on the internet. You want to come drink with me? You know where I'm at. Text me. <laughs> we're trying better. to get it like a real show, you yeah, know, I'll like a like a show you watch on TV, not a not a Zoom. So we're working on that. Uh, we got people on the team who are, are uh, you know, who are smarter than us on the back end to do it all. But we want to have more active trading, trade ideas, not the boring like, hey, what's a good stock for the next year? Did Jeff get kicked off? I'm Jeff here, but uh, I don't know what happened with my, uh, I don't know why the hell my video just went dead. Let's try it again. There I am. All right. Sorry. I thought Press someone got board. canceled. 
John, you're from, Joe's from St. Augustine, the most haunted city in the world. He's telling us no politics, yet he's watching. This is not our first episode. You know how we talk. You know how we do. I've, I, had, I had a guy telling me that he was, I had like this really sanctimonious, judgmental old guy that, one, that met me at one <laughs> event. Yeah, he was like, I'm better than you, sort of vibe he was giving me. And I was like, okay, he was like an old guy. So I give my respect to the elders. It's just how I was raised. And he was giving me this whole thing about cussing sometimes. I'll put some curse words in there. I mean, that's how, I mean, that's how people from New York talk. You can use the F word in like six diff as a preposition, as a pronoun, as a verb. You know? Jeff, you're not going to star in the next Disney movie. Right. So I'm not going to star in the next Disney movie. So I'm thinking to myself, like, if this dude had ever been to like actual Wall Street and listened to how it sounds, like he would probably have like, he would faint on the floor and they would have to take him out, give him CPR. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, I can change who I am for like the sensibilities <laughs> of other people, or I can keep doing the shit I want to do. And I was like, thank you for your advice, sir. He's like, well, I would never buy your products because you cuss. And I was like, I think I'm going to be all right, but I appreciate your advice. So that's where we're at. <laughs> oh, too anyways let's right. look at some markets let's look at the markets. so this week we've got cpi and we've got we've got the scammer in chief uh jay, jay? powell yeah the he's scammer on and chief that's beautiful he's scammer a scammer in chief. chief he's a scammer in chief and he's coming wednesday uh with his with his usual dog and pony show to try to to try to be the center of the attention the guy's a prima donna i don't like that like it's like a referee that throws a flag and everything but play. yeah yelling was the same thing oh let me go on stage do my hair and and you know talk how i look like a bird and you ever watch the, the football game lance you ever watched a football game where you're like i came here to watch the players play i didn't come here to watch you throw a flag and talk after every down just to hear yourself talk and that's how I feel this guy is with the markets. I feel like he's a little bit of a me, me, me person. Yeah, and he needs yeah. to be in the center of it all the time. And I don't like it. But, you know, I don't know if that's politics for you. It's just my take. Anyways, he's coming Wednesday. They're supposed Before to be that, independent, though. Right? What? Say that? That's supposed to be independent, not a, not a political uh, uh, <sighs> whatever. Go, anyway. go ahead. The Fed CPI. is. So this yeah. matters because we don't have anything else doing. Like normally it'd be like, okay, let's look at earnings. I mean, there's like, we could look at the earnings. There's a couple of companies, but there ain't nothing. say what? Yeah. There's really no earnings. I mean, yeah. So we got the yeah, CPI no tomorrow morning and last time the CPI came out, it was weaker than expected. And the market went just ape shit. Remember that day? It was yep. up like what, a great day. four or five percent. So it's something we got to pay attention to. I think the pendulum swung a little bit back in the other direction and people are looking for blue skies and there might still be inflation, which could be problematic. But again, I don't think it's going to move as much either way because I think people are kind of just burnt out at this point. I agree. I, I actually, so this is going to sound very uh, uh, millennial permable-ish, but I truly believe inflation is coming down. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, if you if you really don't look at things though, no, it is. You know, you're, st you're starting to have gas come down, but you're starting to have all the other asset classes. You know, obviously crypto, board apes, we're all what eighty celebrities are getting sued. The Rolex market, the luxury car market, everything's starting to come down. So that is a good thing. True. It's not really like yeah, it's coming down a little. I mean, it stopped going up. I'll give you, it stopped going up a lot. It's not going up. I don't think it's revert. Like people are looking for it to like reverse and roll back. It will never, it will never, you'll never pay like $2 for a carton of eggs anymore. That's what I'm like saying. That. That's the, so, yeah. so, so now we're in a situation where like, okay, it stopped going crazy. Cause you know, this is not Venezuela. It's still a first world country, but we have other problems now, right? We have, you know, layoffs across the board. We have earnings coming down. I think earnings are going to be the, you know, like weak earnings and or not weak, but I think people guiding lower in 2023 is going to be the story in 2023. Yeah. But th don't you think they just, they just set expectations so low that setting up for next year, they could finally beat them and stuff like that. I don't even think the recession has really hit hard yet. I think it's just starting. So I think that becomes well, kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy, certain but, sectors. But by the time we're in a recession, the market will already start moving higher. That's true. That's true. We're looking. So like, like to give you an example, everyone no listening, all these people. So, you know, beginning of the year, 
through the last, I don't know, six to eight months, Jeff especially has been very bearish on the, you know. And I'm not world. always. I'm waiting for a back up the truck moment in the market. I don't think we're there yet, but it's when, when it's there, I'm going to tell you to call your Uncle Louie and ask him for a uh, home equity line and back the Brinks truck up and just go long and stay long. A lot of like investor style for a long-term period of time. But I don't think we're there but, yet. But a lot of people past, you know, beginning of the year, past six to eight months, we're bullish. Buy stocks. Everything's great. There's no inflation. There, you know, here's, where do we hear that? Top five stocks. Where, here's a great. Where do we hear that? I wonder where yeah, I heard Here's that. a great stock. Here's <laughs> a great uh, disruptor. Some great tech. All that BS, right? Yeah. Well, now Jim those Kramer same shit. people mm -hmm. who, who were all bullish and, you know, no, no, everything's fine. Look at the economic numbers. Now all those people are bearish, right? Oh, yeah. So when they turn bearish, that's why I'm actually becoming so bullish. Especially I like where you're at. And next year, because all those people who flip now from bullish to now they're all bearish out there. Like Kramer's a great example. Kramer's been bearish on NVIDIA. I think he even shorted it uh, down in like what? Like uh, you pull up NVIDIA there, like in the 114s, 120s. And I bought a crap load of NVIDIA in my retirement account. Now the stock's 170. Yeah. You know, so there's just a great contrarian play out there that when all these people start getting bearish, it's usually a start. Like, you know, when you, when you go talk to your neighbor, you go talk to a friend at the, at the golf or the grocery store and they say, Hey, yeah, the stock market's really bad right now. It's usually yeah. a great time to start buying. I don't think you're wrong about that, but I think, I think that there's going to be, I listen, we're going to be in a situation where you're going to be able to get, you know, yield, you're going to be able to get yield on your savings and not have to buy uh, oh. stocks like this. Dude, my, um, one of my guys from RJ hit me up Friday and he goes, Hey, I got a money market account. I could yeah. probably get you in. It's supposed to be for like X amount of money. Yeah. But for 4%. That's what I'm saying. A that's money the, market. But that's what you, dude, like, I think you were still probably in high school, but I had, I had money market accounts that would yield like six, 7% in that's early 2000. I'm telling that you, is, that's that normal. Life. That's what it's supposed to be when you're in this kind of environment. That's normal. That's normal. But I that's was like, supposed to be 4%. I even thought I was like, shit, I'll put, you know, for liquid money. Well, look at this. Look at that. Yeah. I love liquidity. Is it a, premium right now dude liquidity is everything right now look at this though this is a problem this is a problem is charts like this there's upside but wow but if you take a longer step backwards yeah if you take look, like look, look look how much like this you're gonna tell me that tesla couldn't trade sub 100 dollars. of course you can why couldn't it why couldn't it especially if, if kathy goes under if she this keeps is buying a big part of the market coins. man this is a 500 million dollar market cap which still got a 50 PE. These guys still crazy, have right? Is, you know, I know everyone, I, I like Tesla. I like Musk. I think he's a genius. You hear me fanboying over Musk, but they still got a 55 P, PE in a, in a, in a non-growth environment. That's why what's he's Roku's out there a lot. Sorry. What, what's Roku's PE right now? Just curious. Remember Roku was what? A $300 stock at one point? Roku. Maybe even more. This is a company that does not need to exist. Every TV comes with their technology at this point. Right. Why would you buy a Roku stick? Just buy a new fucking TV. Sorry. I cursed. I, I what was it? 300? <laughs> two, two, 220? No, go back uh, further. The $500 oh stock. God, it was a last year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I still remember. And I had a buddy open up a hedge fund, young guy, early 77%. 20s. Gosh. And thinking, you know, it was the easiest year ever, crushing in 2021. Then he got into NFTs. He left yeah. stocks to get into NFTs and crypto. He's gone. No profile on the internet, nothing. Completely gone from, from the world. Lost everything. It's a shame. It's, really, it's a hard, it's game, a hard lesson, you know. Obviously, if you lost money, you know, during this whole come down, you know, a lot of people did, but at the same time, you know, it's not, it's, you can only party at the club so long and drink champagne and do, you know, now, do this the, is kind the of bullish. so much. 
this is kind of a bullish thing for stock. This two years, so short-term rates, if we can, and I know you don't care about rates too much, but it kind of matters. So if we can get this, if, if you start to see like a collapse in short-term rates under 4% again, like 35 basis points lower, that's going to be rocket fuel for growth stocks. Kathy yep. might even get a bid on that. Yep. So I'm, I'm watching that closely because this is a bearish looking chart on yields, on yield anyways, coming a little bit lower. But this stock can't get out of its own way. Look at this stock, dude. How many false starts has this stock had? Well, she's just horrible at a picking stocks, a horrible trader. But I do think there is, you know, if we get a rotation into growth stocks, I do think you you look at names like Shopify, you know, which has been in the shitter. Uh, I, yeah. I think, you know, Shopify, I think you start looking at like Unity Software, you, Roblox. Um, you know, I think even, to be like honest, even names like Amazon and stuff like that. You know, I know they're they've been around now for a while, but a lot of these stocks out there that have came down. Once that's they a get bad a winter, chart. That's a isn't bad it chart. horrible, right? That's the problem. Like, so you're gonna get you gotta get so you gotta get strength from somewhere. I'll show you something I've been really wrong about. Oil. Crude. I've yep. been pretty bearish on crude, thank God. But I'm bullish on that gas. Gotta admit when you're wrong, dude. All of us are wrong. But everyone, time. everyone I get, everyone I get trade alerts from. Guess what they're all long? What? Oil. Yeah. All the big oil names. Look at these days. One, two, Horrible. three, four, five, six, seven straight days down. It's Why? pre it's pre Ukraine levels now, dude. Look at this. They invaded in February last year. Oil and, and, and the people thinking oil's on a rebound. I'm sorry. I just I just don't see it. I really don't see a bull case for oil. Inflation coming down. That's why I like tech. Uh, growth stock so much i really do because i think you're going to have rotation out of oil names right they had a fantastic year but everyone the past couple months have been you know bullish and, and wrong on them and i think you're going to get some of the some of the growth stocks obviously you've had a nice move in china stock i'm going to show everybody something pretty cool right now we're going to do a spread between growth and value watch this i'm nerding out here so we got, so if you're long, if you've been long growth oh God. and short value <laughs> and short, what value. So S and P growth versus S and P value starting to turn a little bit, but still down 22% in a year. Well, look at five years. This was up at 87% at one point, but let's look at, let's go out even longer. Let's go back 10 years. So this was a 200% outperformer. It's about giving up half, half of its winnings. So long growth since 12, since 2012 has been 225%. Wow. And value has been 122%. Value has been what? 122% return since 2012 until now. So about half, about half, right? Yeah, value has been doing very well lately. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. obviously, obviously your healthcare name, stuff like that, just absolutely phenomenal. But um, I do like, I do like the move into growth. I, I don't want to say we're going to have a, a party into junk stocks again and the high, you know, PE and growth names. But I do think some of the names that got crushed, uh, they're going to accelerate the fastest to the upside. They got a squeeze. Oh, you're them. long boil? You're, well, you're a leveraged junkie. How do you not love it? So who do we have this week? We have Lenar. Uh, on the 14th, Oracle, I guess, is a decent-sized company still to report. Yeah, yeah, Oracle. I got some calls on Oracle, so I would like to see that go up. I'm already up uh, about 20, 25% now. I like Oracle. The big, the, the old, the old cap tech, your Oracle, That's a great your chart. IBM, your Cisco. That's a great. great chart. That's a great chart yeah, compared to what we were looking at earlier for Amazon. Yeah. This is a great chart. But if you look at, you know... If we, could, if we can juxtapose it here in just a second, this stock was never as hyperbolic, man. Like, look at, let's look at, I'll compare it to Amazon. Broke out of a short-term downturn, a long-term upturn. Much better looking chart. Much better looking chart Even than IBM. Amazon. Look at IBM. Look, look at Amazon. This is the, the blue one is Amazon. So Amazon, look at this thing. What's Amazon. PE and Oracle? PE and Oracle. Hold on. I'm curious. 22. That's why. Look at that. It's low PE. It's in line with the market. It's only down 8% this year. It's nothing. 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 
That's very yeah. strong. And you get a nice divvy in it. You know, it's, it's a, so we've been in a year. I, I look like this is since it's a, could be our last episode of the year. Probably. We've been in a year where they've just taken froth out and shot it in the head. Ponzi scheme stocks, crypto Ponzi, anything that doesn't have like TV true, Ponzi. Yeah. <laughs> has been shot in the head has been shot in the actual head. But, but it this is to. not a Ponzi stock. This is a 22 PE company that has a $215 million billion dollar market cap, which still makes going to make $49 billion a year in 2023 in revenue. You know, I think a lot of people are watching us right out there and be like, wow, Jeff still knows like fundamentals too. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. You have to know everything. That's the key. You have to follow everything because you never know when that's what matters. The lesson is you never know when what is driving stock prices why that is so you have to kind of be a little bit of a student of everything i think anyways teachable moment right so we've got you're still here lance next we're gonna start talking about ibm gang <laughs> we're just i think everyone's money. long oil stocks in the chat because everyone keeps talking about oil and they're probably all down money <laughs> it's it's it, there's gonna get there's gonna be a pretty good bounce. I think you can use that bounce to scale out though. I think you kind of have to at this point. But oil's telling you that there's gonna be a worse recession than people anticipate, also. So that's another yeah, way that is true. to that look is at true. the other side of the coin. So we're coming up in the last couple of minutes of this episode. Let's use that to talk about what the plans are. We want to kind of get some feedback other than like, you know, telling us what to wear and what's how to the talk. best weekly option, you know. What do you guys love? What do you guys want us to do more of 2023? We're asking. Yeah, what do you guys? Right? What do you guys like that. trading and want and want uh, to hear about? You guys want weekly option junkie picks? I got all those all day long. When is it? When is it down nine days? Good for a technical bounce. Uh, well, we saw that Friday and look what happened at the close, right? So, you know, we're already we're already selling off here from the highs and the spoos. More swearing and politics, short-term trading. Well, I got you there. I am in oil. Weekly so option many- junkie picks. You see that? That's actually something there. Weekly option. Oh, about. we got you. Good. We like that, Chris. Weekly option junkie. Have a different focus each day of the week. Listen, we're, we're not doing this every day of the week. We're going to need some <laughs> bigger checks for that. <laughs> Michelle, w- w- Michelle, we will honor your requests. We like you a lot. Keep giving us great trading. Oh, another one. Hello, uh, RH. Weekly option picks. What's your weekly option pick? Let's do one one junky uh, pick before uh, before we uh, uh, one lotto ticket. If you ha- if if you had a hundred bucks, Jeff, to put on something this week to make the it, your hundred bucks is going to go to zero or potentially. You know, we can't say it will double, triple, but we'll say the best ROI potential or go to zero. What would, what would, what would, give me a name. And oh yeah, I'd buy, I would buy like PDD. I'd buy like a Chinese internet put. I'd buy PDD or like Baba or something like that puts. So now you hate the China stocks. Well, I mean, everything is sucked in. Like all the good news possible. Like, like. They're already, already down by the way. G, kind of. I mean, compared to what they've been up. Oh, they're down. They're down two bucks pre-market. Pardon me. Yeah, I mean they're down, but they're probably going to still be trading at a premium to their close in China. Now you've had like every possible, yeah. like you've had every bit of good news that you're going to get out of this trade. Like this guy's done everything but stop short of like going to people's houses and kissing babies and like <laughs> fucking and children and putting them to bed. This stock could easily trade back down below eighty dollars, <laughs> like this week. You asked me, what's yours? Now it's on you. Uh, all right. Well, I'm going to talk my book, obviously. <laughs> I got Jan calls, but I'll give people a- But that's a, outside of that. I, I wouldn't ever do that because it's such a wild trade. I might do it for burn notice for like for a day, but that's not like something I'd do. It's too crazy. But go well, ahead. The stock, the stock on my book is Comstock, CRK. It used okay. to be, I think, a Jerry Jones stock, if I if I recall. So that's yeah. my name for Natty. Natty. Uh, yeah. Wow, okay. I got Jan 15 calls, which I'm down money. So obviously I'm talking my book, just a heads up. I like that. Uh, full disclosure. You know, maybe like we get a thing there. But uh, if I had another junkie pick that's not part of my book, 
I would probably say, uh, God. Oh, and there's the market. Oh, I got a trade. So there we go. All right, guys. Well, I hope you all appreciate. We appreciate you. Let me start by saying that. We appreciate yes, you we guys. Do. Do. Thank you for joining us every week and listening to us and participating with us. And uh, yeah, we're going to be back hitting it hard in 23. And I think you're going to see a lot more of us working together because uh, yes, like, we, sure. we, we have a similar style, similar approaches to the market. Yeah. Um, and I think you guys like that. I think you guys like the short term, real time, real stuff. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, let's make some money. Let's go Microsoft because I'm down money. Some dough. All right, boys. All right. Thank you, Lance. Peace. Thank you, everybody. Have a great You'll week. We'll get wiretaps in about a little bit and see if we can sell some Microsoft. All right. Awesome. awesome. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. If someone could get maybe test. Wow. Market bid out the wazoo. Okay. Someone could get testimonials in the chat. <laughs>